I think you can see me. Yeah, I'm right over here. There we go. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome this morning. We gather again to uh, worship in this place, and uh, I'm going to say the same thing that I often say uh, back at our other building. Um, we're in a different space, but I believe God was here in advance preparing this space for us, but even more importantly, I believe he was preparing our hearts for these moments together as we worship him and, and give glory to him this morning. So I'm excited to have you here. I'm excited to be here. It's good to have you online. It's good to have you guys back here behind me. And uh, we love you all. Um, Colby, we love you. Thanks for all you do. Um, and uh, so this morning, I just want to give you a couple announcements. I'm not going to say much because there are some other people that have a lot to say. So uh, I'm just making fun of some people, but a couple things. Today is like a day of uh, deadlines almost. I hate to even say it that way, but uh, the family ministry survey is out, and you're supposed to have that filled out by today. Now, I think Hunter's giving a little bit of grace, and he realizes that there's no hard copies out here. And so if there's anybody here that wants a hard copy of that, that is having trouble going online and uh, doing that survey, um, just see Hunter after the service, and uh, he'll, he'll connect you with a, with a hard copy of that survey. I encourage you to do that. It's a ministry, I believe, really helps us to accomplish the mission here in Shippensburg as we seek to engage in communities, uh, grow spiritually, serve others, and, and so on. So, uh, and it's not just for us. It's a, a ministry that will be for our community. Um, Celebrate Recovery will be starting that uh, the 1st of November. That's exciting. And uh, Ashley is, uh, is, she's right up here. Uh, Rich is helping lead that. And uh, I wanted to let you know there's a sandwich sale, and today's the deadline for that. So if you want to order sandwiches to support them, actually you're supporting them going on a trip to a leadership uh, meeting in Boston uh, to learn more about Celebrate Recovery. There are several people going, and um, uh, one person cannot go now, and so there's a, like an open ticket. And so she wanted me to say that if you want to learn, you know, maybe you didn't get on, on the startup team, but you want to learn more about it and you're in, really interested, and maybe you're like, man, I should have done that. Uh, this might be your chance to get involved and learn more about that. See Ashley or Rich. I'm not sure where Rich is at right now. He's in the back there. Uh, see them about that. And let's see. Um, I think that's about, I have one more thing to say. Today is also the deadline for Fit for Service Workshop. We're uh, going to be exploring the ways that God has created us and gifted us uh, for service in his kingdom. And so I invite you to join in that. Sign up today. The sign up is, uh, link is on our newsletter. And we'll be meeting actually right here in this space next Saturday as we uh, participate in that workshop. Dr. Brian Rempsch, uh, he is a friend and co-pastor. He's leading that. And uh, he's excited to come and, and work with us in that. So that's all I have to say. We have this thing coming up real soon called Love Our Town, and Beth is going to give us a few words about that. I'll talk about it. You just, yeah. Okay. Hello. Okay. Um, good morning. So um, Love Our Town um, starts in two weeks. So we have a lot going on. So I have a lot to say today. Thank you, Dale. <laughs> um, a couple of things. If you brought donations, there is a large clear bin um, in the entry area around the corner to the left that you can put stuff in. And we're going to try to keep it there. Um, we're collecting for like three weeks. So you don't have to, if you didn't bring anything today, that's okay. You can bring stuff in future weeks. Um, I don't have that list with me of what we're collecting. It's like linens and shoes and some other random things. That's all in the newsletter. Um, there's a lot in the newsletter about Love Our Town right now, including um, promotion for some of the things you can sign up for. So I printed out a hard copy of open positions for things we're doing during Love Our Town, and I'm gonna explain a little bit about each thing that we're doing. First of all, Sunday, September 15th at 5.30, we are gathering in the grassy area beside the Shippensburg Public Library to pray over the week. That's going to last maybe an hour. Anyone's welcome. We're not asking for signups for that. We're just asking you to come pray for our town and pray for the event that we're doing that week. Um, Monday, September 16th from 2 to 4, um, we're doing bingo at the Shippensburg Rehabilitation Center. There is one sign-up left if you want to help with that, but we are still also collecting items for bingo if you have anything you want to donate, puzzles, scarves, room decor, things like that for residents to decorate their rooms while they're staying there. 
Um, Tuesday, September 17th, Shippensburg Produce Outreach has asked for some help um, from 9 to 12 a.m. And you could do 9 to 10 or 10 to 12. That's a, a split shift if needed. Um, they need help with sorting, housekeeping, organizing, things like that. Um, so if you're interested in that, that is on this sheet. And right under it is help with distribution from um, 3 to 6 p.m. Um, just help distribute boxes, um, organize traffic, things like that, because that gets really hectic right there at the corner of Penn and Orange Street. Um, on Tuesday, September 18th, um, we are serving teachers lunch at Nancy Grayson Elementary School from uh, about 12.30 to 3 o'clock. There's still some spots open for that. Um, the Ridge Church is hosting that financially, and they're taking care of getting all the food. They just need help distributing and talking to teachers. Um, also on Wednesday is the Loads of Love ministry. Um, we've teamed up with Meet the Need, um, who does this every third Wednesday, and this happens to be a third Wednesday. Shippensburg University actually comes and hands out meals, and then people can come inside and get their laundry done at no cost. Um, they are gonna be providing dryer sheets and laundry detergent, and they've asked us to raise money to hand out quarters. So we're looking for about $300 in quarters to be able to to pay for laundry, washers, and dryers that evening. And then we're also just looking for people up to 10. I think we have one right now signed up to come and help um, talk to people and give out quarters and just minister and pray with people if that is a need that we have that evening. Um, also, they said if we want to bring some baked goods to be passing out, that's great too. So if you feel like that's a way that you can help that evening, we would love that. Um, moving on to Thursday, September 19th, um, we're doing another luncheon for teachers at the Shippensburg Area Middle School. And that's the same as what we're doing on Wednesday, except at a different school, and there's still some openings there as well. Also on Thursday, we're going to be right here on campus at the Quad handing out pizza that's been donated um, by the university um, cater catering facility, um, and then also handing out bottled water. We have yard games, and we're just handing pizza out, having conversations um, with students, inviting them um, to our church, just inviting to pray with them. Again, whatever the need is there, we're just um, trying to make connections with the students here on campus. Um, and that is actually from 11 until 1, and it's split into two one-hour shifts. So if you just want to come for the first part or the second part, it's very flexible based on your schedule. Friday, um, September 20th, we're having a family fun night at the Shippensburg Memorial Park Pavilions. Um, we have a lot planned for that evening. Um, right now, I saw her in the audience somewhere. I thought Elizabeth is heading that up, and she's been doing a great job. We're going to have food that night. We're going to have... Um, I just went blank on all the fun things that we're doing. We're having Reins of Rhythm come out where you can like pet and paint the ponies so they're not on pony rides, but they're just doing that. We don't need help with that part, but it's just a fun part of it. Someone else donated um, a cow that you can like milk, so that's just a fun activity. We're looking at maybe having a bounce house, music, and things like that. So that's just going to be a fun night with games and crafts in addition to all that. There's lots of um, available ways to help there, and so that's kind of broken down into what our needs are and what areas you can be helping in on this sheet. There's three different areas, and that is from 5 to 7 p.m., and then we'll need help with um, teardown as well, so there's a section for that, um, and actually there's four sections to sign up on that one, and then on the back page is um, Sunday, September 22nd. We will not be meeting here. We're going to be meeting at the Shippensburg Fairgrounds. Um, I think Right now, we have five churches committed, but we're looking at maybe more coming and all celebrating together in the amphitheater area. Um, our worship team is going to do the music. Um, I forget who's preaching. Tim Beitzel. Tim Beitzel. Beitzel. Beitzel from Assembly of God. Assembly of God. Okay, so he's going to be preaching that day. Um, and we need help with the children's program. We need at least 10 helpers. And of course, we're asking all the churches, so we're not dependent on you guys to sign up for everything. But we're just throwing it out there to all the different congregations. So there's an area to sign up for that. It would be good if you have your clearances for that, because we might be breaking down into smaller groups. Um, Pastor Devana has graciously offered to lead that 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 particular day, we tend to have somewhere between 40 and 60 children. So the more people we have, the better. 
Um, and then also for food service, since we'll have a meal that day, we're looking for people to help with preparing and getting the meal passed out, and then we need help cleaning up after. So that's all that we're doing in that one short week. So any way that you can help out is much appreciated. If you have any um, donations that you want to give, I would say probably online or see me or Roger or um, anyone that I named um, to give a donation, but specifically put that it is for Love Our Town. And if you want it to go to a specific event, just let us know. Um, we appreciate all of you and all the ways that you help make this happen. That's all I got. Thank you, Beth. The sign up will be on the table back there, probably off to the side. Thank you, Beth, for all that. And thanks for all your work in uh, Love Our Town. There's a lot goes into that. And she didn't mention there are four or five churches going to worship together, but there are about nine churches involved in the week and the activity. So that's pretty amazing. So this morning, um, let, me, let me pray for our time together here this morning. Father, we give you praise uh, for the ways in which you come and dwell among us. And so I thank you this morning for your presence here. I thank you for the ways that we will encounter you today as we, uh, as we celebrate at your table. Uh, we're grateful uh, for your gift of salvation to us. We thank you and we praise you for that. And today... We just want to lift our voices and worship you. We want to give you this time as our act of worship, as our way of saying we love you, we praise you, we glorify you. Come dwell among us and have your way in us today as we worship you. We pray it in your name. Amen. There's a, I love the Psalms, and there's this scripture this morning that I want to read for you. As I was reading in the Psalms, it says this. The earth, it's Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and its inhabitants also, because God is the one who established it on the seas. God set it firmly on the waters. Who can ascend the Lord's mountain? Who can stand in his holy sanctuary? Only the one with clean hands and a pure heart. The one who hasn't made false promises, the one who hasn't sworn dishonestly, this kind of person receives blessings from the Lord, from God who saves. And that's how things are with the generations that seek him, that seek the face of God's, of Jacob's God's, Selah. Mighty gates, lift up your heads. Ancient doors, rise up high so the glorious king can enter in. Who is this king of glory? It is the Lord, strong and powerful, the Lord, powerful in battle. Mighty gates, lift up your heads. Ancient doors, rise up high so the glorious king can enter in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord of heavenly forces. He is the glorious king. Selah. Would you stand and worship with us this morning?
forever and Lord I just want to thank you I want to thank you for saving my life and I want to thank you for the people out here whose lives you've saved and I thank you for the people who last week decided to stand up and say yes I'll follow you and be baptized in your name and I just pray that though the road still may be difficult at times, that you're still there and you'll make yourself known even more clearly. And I just pray for those out there who may be forgetting or may be struggling to even accept you, even if the, even the grace you've already freely given. I just pray that they receive it and they take a hold of it and they just cry out to you when they need you. Because you are faithful and merciful and gracious and awesome. And we just thank you for that, Lord. It's
seated. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Pastor B. Welcome this morning. We're glad to have you here. I think it's on. <laughs> Mike's making faces at me. <laughs> this is the mic I don't get along with. It follows me from church to church. I don't know. <laughs> As we come to prayer this morning, I had a scripture that I wanted to share with you. It's from Romans chapter 15. And Paul says, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And that is my prayer for you today, that you would overflow with hope as you trust in him. Let's pray. Uh, Lord God, we come before you, Lord, and... We come with full hearts, with grateful hearts, Lord. I feel like I have nothing left to pray after the beautiful songs of worship. Lord, we give our lives to you. We bow down before you and give you all of ourselves. Lord, we pray that the words of the songs would not just be beautiful words, but they would be the prayers of our hearts as we sing. Lord, we exalt you. Your name is a strong and mighty tower. Lord, you are the one who saves. And we worship you, we exalt you, and we thank you for who you are, for who you are in our world and who you are in our lives. And Father, I pray for each one here that you would be the God of hope. Lord, our world is broken in so many ways. We think of wars, we think of storms, we think of displaced people and refugees. And Father, we pray for them. We pray that your hand would be on each situation and on each person, Lord God, and that you would use those circumstances to draw them to yourself, but that you would work through the circumstances to bring peace, to bring prosperity to the people, to bring safety, Lord God, and healing and restoration, because these things are beyond us. Lord, you are the only one who can do these things, but we have hope because you are the God of hope. And Lord God, we come to you, we don't have all the answers. And I'm glad for that, because if I had all the answers, I wouldn't need faith, and I wouldn't need hope, and I wouldn't really need you. And so, Lord, we come 
humbly knowing that you are the one who holds all the answers. And so, Lord, we pray for those in our body who are mourning losses. Father, we pray your spirit would be with them in ways that speak to them and in ways that enfold them in your love and your comfort. Father, we pray for those who are caring for loved ones. Father, for the caregivers who are working after your own heart. Lord, we pray that you would strengthen them, that you would sustain them, that you would lift them up in this ministry that is such a sacrificial way of giving. Father, we pray for those among us who are sick, for members of our church, for family members, for friends. Lord, that you would bring hope. Father, that you would speak a word of healing, that you would touch physical bodies, that you would touch our mental health, our spirits, our souls, every area that needs healing, Lord. You are the one who brings healing. Father, may your presence be close and near. Not that you aren't, but in ways that we can understand it, in ways that we hear and know that you are with us, Lord God. And Father, Paul prayed that you would fill us with joy and with peace as we trust in you. And so, Lord, for this people of God, I pray that you would increase our trust in you. I pray that our faith would grow. Lord, that our trust in you would grow. Lord, that all of the circumstances of our lives, all the places where things are difficult, where relationships might be rough or broken, where we are facing problems with finances or jobs or whatever it would be, Lord, may we bring that to you and our trust be increased so that we may trust in you and overflow with hope by the power of your spirit, Lord God. Lord, as we come together as a body of Christ, we pray for the ministries that take place among us. Lord, we do pray for Love Our Town as it's coming up. Lord, we pray that your prevenient grace would already be flowing, that hearts would already be opening to hear your word and to respond to you, Lord God. Father, as we are on this campus, we pray for all of the students, all of the faculty, all of the other workers here, Lord, that your grace would flow before Lord, we pray that people would be turning to you, Lord God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And Father, as people are working at our building, we pray for blessing for them. We pray for physical safety as they work. But Lord, we pray that they would be ministered to, Lord. As people go in and out, Lord, that words of encouragement would flow. And that your name would be lifted up through all of the building and all of the dust and dirt of transition. Father, we pray for the other ministries of our church. There are so many. And Lord, we pray for them. We pray for the leaders. We pray for the people involved. We pray that each ministry, whether children's or recovery or Bible studies or prayer meetings, all of them, that they would bear fruit within lives for Christ. And Father, I lift up the rest of this service. Father, we thank you. For your word, we thank you for Dale coming to preach it. We pray your blessing. We pray that we would be receptive to what you have to speak to us this, this day. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This time, Kylie's going to come and read our scripture for us this morning. It's First John Chapter 1, verse 5 through chapter 2, verse 3. Good morning, everyone. Um, this is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light, and there is absolutely no darkness in him. If we say <laughs> uh, we have fellowship with him, and yet we walk in darkness, we are lying and are not practicing the truth. If we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing you these things so that you may not sin. 
But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He himself is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for those of the whole world. This is how we know that we know him if we keep his commands. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Kylie. And I'm not sure, I didn't dismiss junior church earlier, so a junior church, you are dismissed. And Trish, raise your hand. Trish is back there waiting for you, and you can go with her. Sorry about that. Um, so, Andrew, okay, Andrew, you're right there. I just wanted to say, um, actually, you're, you're correct. Our whole live stream dropped, I think, going to Facebook and YouTube. So, what we'll do, if anybody's texting in, just let them know that we'll, we're recording it, and we'll, we'll, we'll drop it out there on YouTube and Facebook this afternoon. So, all right, thanks. Well, um, this morning, I, I um, want to make a little disclaimer, and that is, I might mess with your head a little bit, and Jesus is my partner in crime, okay? All right, I just want to put that out there. This is, this is okay, so, um, I mean, we have a sermon title here, Rules or Distractions. Uh, how many of you would disagree with that? I mean, I wrote the sermon title, and I think I kind of disagree with it. How many of you would disagree with that? Rules or distractions? Like, I mean, yeah, I know there's some people here that, like, you know, by the book, uh, you know, people that have the strength of, of um, discipline are probably like, no, rules, we need them, right? Um, rules or distractions? So here's what I want you to do this morning. We're going to do a little exercise um, you have a piece of paper and a pen, and I'm, I'm going to give you a couple rules to write down. And one of them is, Patty, don't look at me like that. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, so, so we're going to write a couple rules down. Okay, now, now pay attention and wait for them. Okay, I just get, want you to get ready. Okay, the first rule, are you ready? Don't write any rules on that piece of paper. Okay, don't write any rules. I know rules can keep us focused and rules keep us on track, but don't write any rules on that piece of paper. Because it seems to me that in this passage that we're about to explore, Jesus is telling us that rules are distractions, so I certainly don't want to give you any rules to write down. Let's just, let's just hold on, hold on to that thought. Let's, let's explore this passage and, and see what Jesus might actually be saying to us. Uh, there will be time to write on that paper later. Don't fill it up with notes because I'm going to need you to write. If you want to write notes, flip it on the back because I might need you to write something eventually on the front, okay? I told you I'm just going to probably mess you up a little bit this morning. I'm not apologizing for that. Matthew chapter 7. Uh, this is a unique passage because the lectionary kind of breaks it up a little bit. And so it's Matthew chapter 7 verse 1 through 8 and then we jump to verse 14 and 15 and then we jump to verse 21 uh, through 23. And so this is, uh, this is Mark's word. It's the gospel. Actually, if you're, uh, if you're able to stand for the gospel, I ask that you would stand in honor of the gospel reading this morning. The Pharisees and some legal experts from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus. They saw some of his disciples eating food with unclean hands. And then there's this bracket and a long explanation. So here it is. They were eating without first ritually purifying their hands through washing. The Pharisees and all the Jews don't eat without first washing their hands carefully. This is the way of observing the rules handed down by the elders. Upon returning from the marketplace, they don't eat without first immersing themselves. They observe many other rules that have been handed down, such as washing of cups, jugs, pans, and sleeping mats. So, the Pharisees and the legal experts asked Jesus, why are your disciples not living according to the rules handed down by the elders, but instead eat food with ritually unclean hands? He replied, Isaiah really knew what he was talking about when he prophesied about you hypocrites. He wrote, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far away from me. Their worship is empty since they teach instructions that are human words. You ignore God's commandments while holding on to the rules created by humans and handed down to you. Then Jesus called the crowd again and said to them, Listen to me, all of you understand. 
Nothing outside a person can enter and can contaminate a person in God's sight. Rather, the things that come out of a person contaminate the person. Jumping to verse 21, it is from the inside, from the human heart, that evil thoughts come. Sexual sins, theft, murders, adultery, greed, evil actions, deceit, unrestrained immorality, envy, insults, arrogance, foolishness, all these things come from inside and contaminate a person in God's sight. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. You may be seated. So this first section really, for me, kind of culminates in and around uh, verse 6 and 7. Jesus, he, he hears the question from the Pharisees, and, and then he just quite literally says, Isaiah really knew what he was talking about. Like, these words from Isaiah apply to you. And they're words that are point, pointing right to your hypocrisy. And this is what he says. He says, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far away from me. In other words, God doesn't necessarily care what you say about him. You can give him lip service, but if your heart isn't right, God's not impressed. God cares about your heart. God looks at the heart. And then he says, their worship of me is empty since they teach instructions that are human words. And here you have this idea that they're teaching human words and it's keeping them from worship. They're, they're practicing these human rules and it's keeping them from right worship of God. The rules are distracting them from what? Worshiping God. So rules are a distraction. I, I have an example from our recent past history. I, rem I remember this day, and I, I was thinking about this this morning and reflecting on like, wow, wow. <laughs> because in 2019, at District Assembly, I got ordained. But I hardly even remember that part of it. I mean, I probably should say that. Good thing we're not live streaming. I don't want like my general superintendent to hear me say that, or even my district superintendent. What, here's what I remember. I remember sitting in service on Saturday night, and Dr. Busick, he gets up there, and he says, tonight, they've asked me to preach on calling. And I knew there was somebody sitting beside me that was called. And so I was like, I'm not going to, I'm just going to. And Dr. Busick preached, and he preached, and sure enough, that very, when the service, uh, when the sermon had ended, Dr. Busick, he made an altar call, and I got a tug on my sleeve, and it was our friend Hunter, and he wanted to go pray, and so we went to the altar, and, and Ken came over, and we're praying at the altar, and Hunter's not lying when he talks about this moment. Dr. Busick's shoes were right here as we were kneeling praying. He's, he's standing right there. We're, we're, the three of us are there praying. Hunter's accepting his call to worship, or call to worship. Yeah, that too. Call to ministry. He's, he's worshiping God by answering the call that God is placing on his life. And in all that, he looked just like he did now. I don't know. Maybe it was on straight or backwards. He had a hat on. He had a hat on. In the middle of our district assembly, kneeling in front of the general superintendent, his hat's on. And I'm thinking, well, that's interesting. I didn't care about that. But I just thought, and then, and then I know, I know there were people going, Tell that man to take his hat off. Tell him to take his hat off. And the general superintendent didn't tell him to take his hat off. And the district superintendent didn't come over and tell him to take his hat off. Nobody asked him to take his hat off. Why? Because there was a powerful moment of God's movement, changing the heart and life, calling this young man to ministry. Who cares about the hat? Right? <laughs> Who cares? And I'm thankful to this day that from the top of our denomination down through the bottom, nobody said a word about that hat. And if they did, I don't know what that would have done. 
for our current situation, but we might not have a young man still following his call to worship because those kind of things are like, well, huh? he didn't know. He didn't even know at the time. We talked about it later. He's like, what? That's really a thing? I'm like, yeah, but it's, you know, whatever. But I really, that's the moment I remember. From the district assembly that I got ordained at, that's the moment that I remember. And I'm so grateful for that moment of where God was glorified and God was honored. And we weren't following human rules. We were worshiping, praising God in that moment that this young man was answering the call. So that's, that's just an example of, but, but that goes to this part. Jesus says, nothing outside of a person can enter and contaminate a person in God's sight. What you wear doesn't contaminate you. I want to say, the people around you don't contaminate you. Like, where you place yourself doesn't contaminate you. What? <laughs> no. The stuff outside, the, what comes out of your heart is what God cares about. He doesn't care what you wear. God doesn't care about the people that you place yourself around. God cares about your heart. He wants a pure heart. So I kind of look at you, Hunter, and say, so, so what matters is not your hat, it's your heart, right? Praise God. God cares about our heart. Now, here's the thing. We're funny people. We know that God knows all things. We know that. But yet, we oftentimes try and hide what's in our heart. <laughs> but God knows what's in our heart. And what I love is, is, like, he knows, and he knows that sometimes there are things in our heart that aren't, aren't good. Jesus lists them later, but, but yet God cares about our heart. He knows, he cares, and he wants to change our hearts. That our hearts might look more like him. That makes me want to give my heart to him. That makes me want to give my heart to him. He cares. Even though he knows it's, it's, not, it's not, there's things in there that aren't right. He still wants my heart. That's amazing to me. Maybe that's why we sing songs like Amazing Grace and so on and so forth. I got a confession to make. <laughs> These words, this list... Um, as, uh, we're, as I'm reading through it, I, I kind of get a little fidgety. You know what I'm talking about? Of course you do. Of course you do. Don't sit there all straight. Like, let's just hear this. It's from the inside, from the human heart, that evil thoughts come. Sexual sin, theft, murders, adultery, greed, evil actions, deceit, unrestrained immorality, Envy, insults, arrogance, foolishness, all these things come from inside and contaminate a person in God's sight. I saw some of you flinching while I was reading that list. Some of you had a deer in the headlight look. I, I got to say, my heart needs some work. Does yours? My heart still needs some work. I'm not everything that God wants and desires me to be yet. And I won't be until I'm with him in glory. And so what do we do with that? What do we do with that? My heart's not everything that God wants it to be yet. But he cares about my heart. He knows my heart. And he loves me and wants to change my heart. What do I do with that? Well, there's a, there's a couple things I've been thinking about. Maybe some pictures that could help us a little bit. And one of them is we're here. <laughs> we're worshiping here because we're remodeling our building. And so last week we... we in, in a way, we just handed the keys of our building to the contractors. And last week, they went in there and they ripped down ceiling and they pulled up floor and they cut some walls out and, and they just, just kind of made a mess of things. And then this week, they began to reshape what the inside of our building looks like. They started to build walls and it's starting to take shape and it's starting to look different. You know, we can do that with our hearts, too. There can be a moment in our walk of faith where we say, God, I'm, I'm giving you all my heart. I'm giving it to you. 
And you can, you can do whatever you want. I know you have a plan, and that plan is that my heart would more reflect your heart. And so I, I, I give you my heart. I give it to you. Do whatever you want. Take out whatever you want. Reshape whatever you want. Make it look like what you want to make it look like. And in that moment, God gives us a pure heart, and he leads us more and more into the maturity of faith that he desires for us. Ephesians 4 talks about it. His goal is to mature us that we might look more and more like him, measured by the standard of the fullness of Christ. Well, that's one way to think about it. But I was encouraged by uh, Dr. Dan Boone at, at uh, PowCon this year to take this book that we got and to use it. And so this morning I'm going to use it to help us think about another way that we might allow God to work in our heart. And so this book is by um, a rather old, a 99-year-old Nazarene pastor, uh, retired pastor, retired uh, teacher. His name's Reuben Welch, and our friend Ken loves him. And I'm starting to love him, too, as I read this book. And it's, um, he's speaking from 1 John, and I, I'm just going to work through some of this. And uh, I'm kind of ad-libbing and kind of following his framework, but using some of my own stuff. But he talks about this. And so Kylie read 1 John for us. And in that, it says, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. So what does that mean to walk in the light? So just think about it this way. If God is light, then that means that God shines. And so to walk in the light would mean that we're walking in the very shining of God. His light is shining on us. And we know in John, John says that, that Jesus came. He was in the beginning. He was the Word. He was with God. And later on he says, He's the light. And so Jesus is the very light of God that shines into our life. So here's the the mental picture I want you to get. How does God's light shine into our heart? If you think about a building, this one's not a good example, but if you think about our building back at the church, what would we do to get light to shine into that building? Well, think about this. If we took the roof off of it, God's light would shine in, right? And so let's think about that for us and how does God shine his light into our heart? Well, for us to allow God to shine his light in our heart, we have to take the roof off of our heart, so to speak. We have to uncover, we have to open up the ceiling so that God's light can shine in. And so we do quite the opposite of that. A lot of times we will take and we'll, we'll cover. And here are some of the ways that we cover. We, we pretend or we define things as we want them defined. And in essence, we're hiding or we're covering those things up. But to walk in the light is to take the covers off. It means exposing my life so that God's light can shine in and so that God can offer his verdict on my heart in my life. For God to shine into my life is to allow him to to render verdict. Don't worry, that's a good thing. So not only do we want to take the roof off, we also want to open up the doors, open up the cupboard doors, open up the bedroom doors, open up all the doors in the rooms of our hearts so that God's light can not only shine in, but shine all the way through all of our heart. John goes on to say, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Here's the thing. Confession, confession and walking in the light go hand in hand. They're like peas in a pod, so to speak. 
Walking in the light means living in openness and confession. So when we confess, what's, what's going on there? When we confess, we're, we're opening ourselves to the truth of God in our life. And so where we allow God to shine, He's shining His truth, His, His verdict. And when we confess, then that means not only is the light revealing, the light is healing. So the light that reveals is also a light that cleanses and heals. It's like opening up the wounds of our life to the sunshine of God's love. But the issue is we don't, we don't get very far as humans sometimes because, well, we're human people and we kind of, you know, like we, t- we take a step forward and sometimes it's two steps back and we, we uncover and then we cover back up. And I want you to think about some of the ways that we cover. And, and if I flinch <laughs> while I say one of these, uh, you, you might be on to something. One of the ways that we cover is Oh, this is just an example. It wasn't anger. It was righteous indignation. Covering up. Um, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't an a lustful look. It was an appreciative glance. Covering up. Covering up. The other day, I heard this song. Just yesterday. I, I got in my car, and for some reason, my... Spotify didn't connect, and so I'm, the radio came on. I thought, ah, you know, I'll just listen to the radio for a little bit. So I hear this. I've never heard this song. Some of you probably have. Maybe some of you even like this song. If you do, oh, oh well. Here's the words. Here's the words in, in a way. It's, it's a girl singing. She's, she's singing about, man, I've met this guy. I've met this guy, and, man, he is just, he is to die for. And she's singing about how, man, he, like, he, like, holds the door for me. He lets me in the car. He doesn't make me cry like the ex did, you know. He's great. I love it. And then the song goes to these words. He's got me doing things I've never done before. Usually, here's the cover, usually we call that sin. Oh, but not this time? Cover it up. Right? I never heard that song before, but man, in light of this sermon, I'm like, wow, that was a cover. Wow. Did I flinch anywhere in there? Okay, anyway. Here's the awful thing about covering. See, when we cover things up, when we don't, when we don't open up, when we cover things up, we go on unjudged, unchecked, unrebuked, uncleansed, and what I cover up, I'm left with. But what I open up receives not only the revealing of God, it also receives the healing of God. And that is the growing edge of the Christian life. That's the growing edge of growing and maturing in our faith because what he reveals, he heals. And what he illuminates, he cleanses. And this is our continued salvation day by day, walking with the Lord opening up our heart, stopping covering so that God can render his verdict in our heart. God is light. How are we walking in the shining of God? Because when we do, he's changing our heart, make it look more and more like his heart. Do you want to walk in the shining of God this morning as the light shines in? Here's what I want to do. As we prepare for communion this morning, that piece of paper you have, the bottom, the bo- on the bottom line, I want you to just kind of fold that over and uh, crease it real good. Um, is that, that's not an extra one. Yeah, crease that real good because we're going to take a few moments and and just kind of uh, ponder and think. And maybe some of you don't need to do this because God's already been speaking to you. But here's what I want to do. What is it that you've been covering? What's in your heart that you need to give to God? That he might remodel your heart. And make it new and make it look more like him. 
Let's just take a few moments to, to jot something down, and then I want you to tear the bottom edge of that paper off, and if you can't tear it in a straight line, it'll just be, you know, you're a little rough around the edges. No problem. No problem. So let's take a few moments to do that this morning. Here's what we're going to do this morning. I'm going to do communion, I guess, a little differently. Um, But I'm going to ask uh, the servers and the worship team if you would come a while. And what we're going to do as we come to communion this morning, I want you to bring that paper with you. And uh, as as you come to communion, we're going to we're going to bring whatever that is recognizing that that Jesus is always offering us salvation, that His work of salvation wasn't finished on the cross, and that He's continuing His work of salvation in our hearts day by day as we we continue to to grow in Him. He's sanctifying us. He's he's healing us, so to speak. He's, He's taking our hearts and shaping them that they might look more like His. And it's really for us, it's about our posture, to be honest with you. What is the posture of your heart? Are you, are you giving your heart to God? Are you letting Him shine His light in your heart that He might continue to purify your heart to make it look more like you? Or are you covering and hiding the things in your heart from God? Well, this morning, I want to say this to you. As you come, as you come to the table God cares about your heart. He knows your heart. He cares about your heart. He wants to change your heart. And it starts by Him meeting you right where you are, just as you are. So you don't have to be ashamed of where you're at. You just need to recognize, hey, if I, if I give this to God, God will work. And He'll move and He'll change and transform me. I don't have to be ashamed. I just need to come and, and give to Him the things that are contaminating my heart. And so I want you to bring those papers, and as you come, I'll have the server stand out here, and there's little baskets, and you can just drop that in the basket. Whatever you wrote on that piece of paper, drop it in the basket, and then receive. Receive His body and His blood, because His body and His blood was given that you might, that you might receive His gift of salvation. His body and blood was given that you might be changed and transformed. 
his body and blood was given that from this day until the day he returns again, that, that you can t- continue to mature in him. And so uh, that's, that's what we're going to do this morning. Let this be a, a holy moment in which God is purifying our heart as we let him shine into it. Amen? Amen? And so uh, I'm going to, uh, we'll start over here. Whoa, I'm getting shaky all of a sudden. And before, before we come, um, oh, I'm sorry, I gave you, a, that's not what you, yeah, yeah. I told you I was going to mess with you this morning. I wasn't lying. Before I invite you to come, uh, I just want to say a few words, and then I'm going to institute communion, but... I want to let you know we have visitors this morning, and so a couple things. Uh, we'll just come down the side aisles, and actually, if you guys would stay on the inside of those baskets so we can give it to God and receive from Him in that order, that would be great. Um, so we're going to come down the side aisles. You'll drop your paper in the basket. You'll receive from Christ. And we practice by intinction. So intinction is we take the bread, we dip it in the juice, and then you can partake right there at the server's. Normally, we would have altars and kneeling, but we're, we're uprooted, so we don't have altars. Um, uh, you're welcome to go back to your seat and partake there at your seat uh, after a time of reflection. And um, this table is it's, uh, the table of our Lord Jesus Christ, which means that it's not my table. It's not the Church of the Nazarene's table. It's his table. And he invites to the table who he invites to the table. That's another way of saying we practice open communion here. So you don't have to be a member of our church. Um, If Jesus invites you to the table, then I invite you also to come and and partake this morning. So we remember on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he gathered the disciples. And uh, I like to think of it this way. He gathered them and, and he was meeting them just as they were, right where they were. They were, they were no angels. They were his disciples, and they were quite messed up. As a matter of fact, one would betray him, the other would deny him, um, and the rest would scatter whenever trouble came. They, they were, their, their hearts were a mess. And yet he said, come, come to the table. And so when he gathered them around the table, he, he took the bread and he, he broke it. And as he, he broke the bread, he said to them, this... This is my body, which is given for you. As often as you partake of this, remember, remember me. In the same way, he took the cup, and after he blessed it, he said to them, This cup is the cup of my blood and the new covenant, which is poured out for the forgiveness of your sins. As often as you drink from this cup, Remember me. That, that takes new meaning for me. As, as often as you drink from this cup, that, that says to me that forgiveness and confession are an ongoing thing. As often as you confess, receive my forgiveness. It's an ongoing practice for us in which he uses it to change and transform us. And so it is this morning... I invite you uh, to come, and I do want to say if, if you uh, do not want to practice by intention, I do have some sealed packs here. You can come right to this table, and I'll offer communion to you right here. And so at this time, the, the worship team is going to play some music as we come to the table, and we just start by going down the side aisles. Uh, I invite you to come uh, now and be careful on this side as you come. Let's receive him this morning. If the altar's where you need us, take me there. Here in the 
times with the Lord's Prayer. Uh, we're not going to do that today. We're going to do something a little different, and it involves your, uh, your paper and pen. Imagine that. Um, in the Lord's Prayer, there's a line that, um, that goes like this, uh, may your will be done on earth, here it is, as it is in heaven. And what we're about to do maybe mirrors that in some ways. So just bear with me here. I might not be done messing with you yet. Um, on that piece of paper, I'm going to give you something to write down, and 
I don't know, it might kind of seem like a rule, so you're going to have to determine if you're going to break Dale's human rule or not, because I said not to write any rules on that paper. I don't know if it's a rule or not. It's a commandment. Jesus gave it, and his commandment was to love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength. Go ahead and write that down if you dare break my human rule. I encourage you to. There's a second part to it. It's not two rules, it's just a second part. The second part is love your neighbor as yourself. It's interesting, the the passage that Kylie read and, and the passage we were in both reference God's commandments. And that is a summing of God's commandments. Love the Lord your God and love people. I don't think you can fully love people if you don't love God because you need God's love to fully love people. And, and, and you can't love God without loving others because God's command is to love others. And so they, they're wrapped up together. And it, it kind of feels like a rule. It's called a commandment. And I said, you know, we, we weren't going to write any rules on there, but this rule helps keep us focused, helps keep us our heart focused on God. And and what God desires, and so that our heart might be shaped more and more like Him. It's, it helps us focus. This rule isn't distracting. It helps keep us focused, right? That's good for us people to have discipline and, and I guess, focus. But then there's this. The rule is very distracting. This rule is very distracting. Because if we love God and we love others, it'll distract us from the things that want to contaminate our hearts. Would you stand and worship together?
Let me down. He's faithful in every 
is my firm foundation And the rock on which I stand And everything around me shaking And I've never been more glad When I put my faith in Jesus say this, uh, you can uh, continue to stay in fellowship as long as you want, and there are things you want to throw out the day that I didn't mention earlier. At 12, we have a barbecue. It's kind of like right over here by the Lures Center. The Fuse uh, uh, or Young Adult Ministry is inviting you to that, and so I encourage you to go enjoy a barbecue with them. And then tonight, right here at 6, we have missionaries from New Zealand telling us about the work of God in New Zealand. And so I invite you to come. There will be light refreshments for that. And so let me, let me give you a blessing. May the God of peace himself cause you to be completely dedicated to him. May your whole soul, spirit, and body be found blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, the one who calls you, he is faithful, and he will do it.
Praise be to God. Go with his blessing. Amen. Amen.